Hello everyone. Khrushchev was one of the better known leaders of the Communist Russia during the Cold War. Now during one of his formal addresses to the Communist faithful he proceeded to denounce his predecessor Stalin for crimes committed against the Russian people. However, halfway through the address a loud voice came from the audience. Where were you, Mr. Khrushchev, when all these atrocities were taking place? There was a stony silence. Khrushchev then said, Can the man who said that please stand up? There wasn't a stir. You could have heard a pin drop. He repeated it, but still no one moved. Khrushchev continued, now you know, comrade, where I was when all these atrocities were taking place. Unlike the man in the audience, as Catholic Christians, we must not hide our identity when our faith is questioned, or worse, disowned by certain elements of present-day society. Jesus said in today's Gospel, when your faith is challenged, that will be, will be your opportunity to bear witness. Even among family or friends, when relationships become a bit strained because of our faith, we need to stand firm. In this context, we call on the martyrs of England and Wales to pray for us. In our bid these days to be more ecumenically appealing, there is a tendency to skim over the self-sacrifice of those who gave their lives for the Catholic faith in this country and see it as the product of a less enlightened, more barbaric age. Last Sunday we remembered those who fell in the world wars and regional wars, which of course must never be forgotten, but as Catholics, neither should we forget those who freely sacrificed their lives for the faith of this country. People like Margaret Clitheroe, a convert to Catholicism, mother of three, three, who was persuaded by her family and friends to abjure her faith, but pointedly refused. It wouldn't be right if knowledge of the country's martyrs were withheld from our school children, especially those at secondary level. These brave men and women face death rather than renounce their Catholic faith. Jesus foretold as much in today's Gospel. But it did not just happen in this country or centuries ago for that matter. A few years ago, the last Pope canonised over 400 people who died for their faith during the Spanish Civil War of the 1930s. Last year, there were at least 300 people in different parts of the world who died as a result of being Catholics. Not far from here, that's Sheffield, about nine miles out the road in Derbyshire, there is a shrine to the Padley Martyrs. These priests gave their lives for the Catholic faith during the Elizabethan era. And I think it is interesting to note, however, that one of them, Nicholas Garlick, was betrayed by his own uncle. Now this re-echoes the words of Jesus when he says, you will be betrayed even by relations and friends. In return, the uncle was given a sizable portion of monastic land which his descendants hold to this day. The dissolution of the monasteries after 1535 provided rich pickings for those who were well placed to get their hands on some of the monastery land which was the most developed and best farmed in the country. At the time of the Reformation, people didn't just suddenly develop an attitude for the new religion. The promise of land was also a driving force behind its establishment. People were even prepared to betray their families to be on the land list. Remember, Judas, one of the apostles, betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Have we ever compromised our spiritual values or our Catholic faith for the sake of material gain? Of all the saints in the Church's calendar after Our Lady, the martyrs hold pride of place. And as 
this year of faith draws to a close, may we resolve more earnestly to emulate their courage and resilience in our times as they did in theirs. Now, let me present you with a few questions to consider. First, have Christians generally been shrinking violets, especially when their faith is tested or trivialized or not taken seriously by the secular world in which we live? Second, is there a tendency by many to play down the self-sacrifice of the martyrs of England and Wales for the sake of being more ecumenically correct or even politically correct? Third, who benefited most from the dissolution of the monasteries, 900 of them, under Henry VIII from 1535 onwards? Last, how generally do parents feel when their children or other members of their family stray from their Catholic faith and rarely go to Mass? Is it just part of growing up, or is there a deeper malaise going on in our society which needs addressing by the Church? How would you answer these questions? Thank you all for listening, and God bless you all. Oh.